Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Judge who let compound Muslims walk free before trial exposed for what else she did. The New Mexico judge who on Monday set a ridiculous $20,000 bail for five defendants arrested at a remote New Mexico compound where authorities say children were being trained to conduct school shootings seems to have a history of issuing low bail to violent offenders, especially when it comes to crimes against children. Judge Sarah Bacchus, let's remember the name, who is an elected Democrat is the judge who ordered the two men and three women to wear ankle monitors, have weekly contact with their attorneys and not consume alcohol or own firearms while on bail after paying the 20k. And what's possibly the worst part of all this is she actually said that although she was concerned by the troubling facts in this case, prosecutors failed to make the case for any specific threats to the community. What? Here is more on this case via NBC News. A three-year-old boy died, allegedly during a religious ritual. Children said they were being trained to commit mass shootings. A large weapons cache was found, with practice targets. On Monday, Prosecutors detailed horrifying allegations against five adults who were found with 11 starving children in a makeshift compound in Taos County, New Mexico, but the judge said they weren't backed by enough evidence to keep the defendants behind bars as they await their trial. The state alleges that there was a big plan afoot, State District Judge Sarah Bacchus said in court. But the state hasn't shown to my satisfaction, in clear and convincing evidence, what that plan was. The decision stunned many, and prompted threats against Bacchus. But experts say the move is the result of a series of recent changes to how the state treats defendants before their trials, with clear and convincing evidence of being a danger to the community a legal requirement for pretrial detention with no bail. These people have been charged. They have not been convicted, said Leo Romero, a law professor emeritus at the University of New Mexico and the chairman of a committee that made recommendations on reforming cash bail in the state, which were adopted by the state Supreme Court in 2017. So you're balancing individual rights versus safety of the community, and the judge is weighing that when she is determining the evidence presented by the prosecutor, he said. New Mexico is part of a wave of estates that, in recent years, have re-examined how they handle bail and pretrial detention. In 2014, the state Supreme Court, in New Mexico v. Walter Ernest Brown, deemed that even if someone is charged with a serious offense, a judge has to make an individual determination on whether to detain the defendant before trial. Just because someone is charged with first-degree murder or first-degree sexual assault, that by itself is insufficient, Romero said. The court's got to consider other evidence of whether the person might be a danger or a flight risk, such as the nature and circumstances, which is different than the charge itself. Authorities have no excuse, said Jason Badger, who reported seeing missing boy months ago. And in 2016. An overwhelming number of voters agreed to a constitutional amendment that moved the state away from the traditional money-based bail system to an evidence-of-risk-based system of release and detention, in an effort to bring more fairness. The new system took effect last year. Bacchus would not comment on the case because it is still pending. Barry Massey, a spokesman for the New Mexico Administrative Office of the Courts, said that what she said in court yesterday is as much explanation for her decisions as she can provide. Prosecutors have to file a motion and then they have to prove by clear and convincing evidence that no other conditions of release will reasonably protect the public's safety, he said. What the judge said yesterday is that they didn't meet that burden. While Bacchus agreed to release the defendants from jail to house arrest, she required them to wear GPS ankle monitors and to check in weekly with their attorneys, plus cooperate with the New Mexico Children Youth and Families Division. The decision not to hold the defendants spurred a backlash on social media, with some calling for Bacchus to resign. The New Mexico Administrative Office of the Court said the judge had also received threatening phone calls and emails. State Representative Bill Rehm, R. Albuquerque, a former law enforcement officer, said he felt Bacchus had not been tough enough. There's the remains of a young child found here, he said. Someone should be charged with some kind of homicide or murder. Whoever did that clearly is a violent person, and so they should be detained. Bail was set at $20,000 for each defendant. But Bacchus said she would allow the defendants to walk out on what's called a signature bond, in which case they don't have to post any cash. The case has yet another twist, while the five were released to house arrest, because they were living on a makeshift compound on someone else's property, they don't technically have a house to go to. Massey said that had been solved by offers from residents in Taos County to let them stay with them. Maria Legrand Miller, a public defender for one of the defendants, Hujrawa Hodge, confirmed her client had received such offers but would not say from whom, 
other than to say the residents didn't have any criminal problems and were in good standing. My client would like to obviously get out of jail and she has no desire to go back to the compound property, Legrand Miller said. The judge has ordered that they not return there, and she has no desire to return there. Fox News has reported that this isn't the first time Judge Backus has pulled a stunt like this. Just last month, she set a $10,000 bond for 24-year-old Rafael Orozco from Taos who was accused of beating his girlfriend, his newborn child and even a healthcare worker at Holy Cross Hospital in September 2016. He then prompted a lockdown at Holy Cross Hospital after allegedly attacking those three individuals. Police later confirmed that Orozco prompted the lockdown at the hospital after punching his girlfriend as she breastfed their newborn in front of a male doctor, grabbing the mother by the throat and slapping the baby. Orozco then fled the hospital and was arrested in Rio Arriba County a few months later. During his time in prison, Orozco was accused of other crimes, including obtaining Suboxone, an opioid medication, and pulling a fire alarm. A year later, he and his brother, Christian Orozco, were charged with assaulting and threatening a guard. In September, Bacchus approved an order to incarcerate Orozco at the Lee County Correctional Facility until his trial. Orozco's defense attorney recently filed a motion arguing for his release and last month, Bacchus ruled in his favor. Of course, with a little research, we here at RWN found that Judge Bacchus apparently gave money to Barack Obama for his 2008 campaign for president. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.